Hey, this is Jeff, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a pulsating next button uh, when the timeline of your slide ends. Uh, this is actually one of the feature requests I see coming by in the Articulate community a lot. It's something that originates from, uh, I think, Articulate Studio uh, at least 09, um, and it kind of got left out in, in the new player. Um, which I totally get, but I, I see that there are a lot of people saying, hey, I wanna alert people that the, the slide has ended and that they can click next. And while there's no default way to do this, there is a way you can create your own buttons and generate that effect. So let's take a look at how that works in practice. So I've got my slide, I've got content on it, the timeline is running, and at the end of the timeline, this button will start pulsating. Let's do that again. Timeline is running. At the end, it will start pulsating. So let's take a quick look at how to set that up in uh, Storyline. It's really simple. You just have to know how. So I'm in Storyline here, and uh, what I've done is on the base layer, I've create I've gone to the layer properties and I've turned off the previous and next button because we're going to create custom previous and next buttons. And I put these on the slide. So here and here there are two buttons that I just created, basic basic shape. Um, and I added some states to them. In this case a normal and a down state. And I can also add a Hoover state, selected state, uh, whatever kind of state you need. Um, but so I created a couple buttons and I created some space for the timeline and an actual line flying in to give that effect. But you don't necessarily need that. Maybe you've got your own look and feel. You just want to use the buttons. Uh, I just did this to make it look like it was part of the original player. Let's put these back. So. These are de default buttons. Uh, they've got a jump to next slide, jump to previous slide trigger on them, and nothing is happening here. But what I've got on the timeline is I've got another trigger that shows a layer called pulse when the timeline ends. And on my pulse trigger, I have duplicated that button um, and I've gave it an, a different color. So uh, this is how it's gonna look like uh, when it's when it's pulsating and I gave it an animation fade in and a fade out so and since it lasts only about a second and a half a little longer um, it fades in within uh, the half of this time and it fades out in the other half and that only happens once by default but if I add a trigger here to hide the layer when the timeline ends, followed by a tri trigger that show the layer when the timeline ends, it's gonna constantly open and close, replaying that pulse in animation. Now to do that, I need to also go to the properties of this layer and uncheck all these boxes. So I don't wanna pause the layer, I don't wanna hide other slide layers. And I'm gonna check this to reset to initial state, which is by default set to automatically decide. So reset the initial state. So this time, every time the layer opens, it will start from scratch. And that's it really. So create a base layer, turn off the uh, previous next buttons, via the properties, add your own buttons that you want. So you can make them look like the default article player or fully customized buttons. And at the end of this timeline, you open a uh, pulse trigger, uh, pulse layer where you have a uh, exact same version of the button, only in a different color, fading in and fading out, and just replaying this timeline over and over until they actually click that button to go to the next slide. That's all there is to it. Hope you like it. Let me know uh, how you're using it. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to, to ask me. Leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'm glad to help out. Bye-bye.